Let's go discover something. Let's go to the park! Now just what should we discover? How about a garden? Now there's plants everywhere here at SeaWorld. And what's a garden without plants? But there's one spot in the park where you can look at some plants and get some education at the same time. And I'm talking about SeaWorld's Garden of Discovery, which is tucked into one of the back corners of the park, right next to the sea lion and otter amphitheater. Now even if you visited SeaWorld, you may not know about this spot. It's kind of easy to miss. After all, like I said, it is kind of tucked away in a back corner of the park. But if you stop in here, you'll see some plants that you may or may not see growing in the rest of the park. There's also plenty of education in here, because you know, SeaWorld is big on that. Never stop learning. Now when you first enter the Garden of Discovery, you'll be greeted with this gazebo, which is decorated with a bunch of colorful fish and a seahorse weather vane. Inside, they've got some information on SeaWorld and how they recycle. In 2009, SeaWorld recycled over 32 different materials for a total of almost 4.5 million pounds. And that's just one year. Holy crow, that's just one theme park. Kind of makes you think about how much waste we generate. Hmm? Now, if you're into archaeology, just to the left of the gazebo is something just for you. Yeah, this little pit here is a sort of excavation area for various types of fossils. Now, I'm not sure on the current status of this excavation pit, but I believe in the past it's been used for school groups. Give the kids some tools and let them dig up some bones. And I'm trying to figure out what the heck this skeleton is. Kind of looks like it could be a dog or something. Oh, I noticed it's a uh, missing part of the skull here. Now just to the right of the excavation pit are some empty planters. Well, not completely empty. It's got some uh, herbs or something growing in here. And a bunny rabbit. Now there is an irrigation system in these beds. And there have been plants in them in the past. So perhaps there will be again at some point. One can hope. But even if those beds are empty, these other ones aren't. Yeah, over here they got some rosemary. And fennel. And one of my favorite spices, ginger. Ever seen a ginger plant before? That's what it looks like. I can't imagine a world without ginger. No gingerbread? No ginger snaps? I shudder to think. And over here they have a tree called a red powder puff. The flowers on it kind of remind me of bottle brush tree flowers. And speaking of bottle brush trees, the Garden of Discovery has one, two, three, four, five of them. And this one has available housing at affordable prices. Ooh, check it out, they got a pomegranate tree. I wonder what time of year the fruit comes ripe. Hmm. Oh, and they got a lemon tree here. I don't need to worry about when those lemons are ripe. I got two lemon trees at home. So some plants are named after the things that they look like. Can we see how these plants got their names? Bird of paradise. Hmm. I don't see it. Dragon's tongue. I don't see it. Okay, that one's called felt hat. But I don't think that looks anything like a felt hat. Okay, so at first glance, this one doesn't look like a crown of thorns, but upon closer inspection, you don't want to touch that. Yeah, that looks pretty thorny. Ooh, they got a staghorn fern in here. Like plants, but don't know where to put them? Just plant them on the wall. Problem solved. Hey, wait a minute. Is that... 
Nah. Now over in this bed, they've got some plants that California is pretty big on. And I'm talking about succulents, which actually have nothing to do with pigs. Though pigs can be very succulent, if prepared properly. And succulents are a type of plant that California is very big on because they're drought resistant. And California is kind of a desert. Oh, and before I forget, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. Now I think that plant right there is milkweed, which if you know, is the food of the monarch butterfly. Monarchs experienced some uh, population declines in recent years, but I think they've kind of started to bounce back. And for that, they need plenty of food. You know, in addition to the right nutrients and the right amount of water, there's something that all gardens need. And that's a full assortment of the proper tools for the job. And to be perfectly clear, I am very familiar with all of those tools. I've done a lot of yard work in my time. And there's a lot left to do. That is almost a circus tree. You know, I already mentioned how SeaWorld is big on recycling. But did you know nature has its own recycling program? Yeah, it's called composting. And it's nature's way of making free fertilizer. Hear that? That's the sound of nature. It's time to move on. There's something else I wanted to show you today. Yeah, I wanted to spend a few minutes in the touch pools over here by Tidal Twister. Over here in the touch pools, they have a small variety of sea creatures that you can actually touch using the approved two finger touch method. It's creatures like sea stars of varying colors, wavy top snails, and red and purple sea urchins. Now this is an interesting sensation. When you put your finger in between the sea urchin's spines, it kind of grabs onto you, trying to sense and see what you are. They also have some sea anemones here in the touch pool, but none of them are where you can reach them and I don't think you want to touch them anyways. Now feeding water to the touch pool is this little waterfall over here which overflows at regular intervals, supplying new waters to the touch pool. A little bit of foam there from the last time it went off. So yeah, if you wanna add a little interactivity to your day, the touch pools are a good spot. Now, I don't know if that sea urchin was trying to eat me, but there is something here that will try to eat you. And SeaWorld just lets them. And I'm talking about our old friends, the cleaner fish, AKA, Gararufa. Yeah, these little guys really do eat little bits of you. But it's okay. It doesn't hurt. It tickles. And the reason it doesn't hurt is because these little guys aren't actually biting you. They're really just vibrating their lip, getting the dead skin off you. And even if they wanted to bite you, they couldn't. Their jaws move side to side rather than up and down. Such cool little guys, love them. And with that, it's about time for me to head on out. Thank you so much for joining me on this little trip to SeaWorld for a look at the Garden of Discovery and some of the touch pools. Till next time, see you later.
check it out. The flamingos are gone. And all that's left are some snowy egrets hanging around. And a few sleeping ducks. Yep, there's not a bit of pink in this little area. Now the flamingos aren't gone, gone. They've just been moved to another area of the park as a precaution. Yeah, there's an avian influenza in wild birds that's going through Southern California and they just want to be on the safe side. So for now, the flamingos are residing in an area over by Shipwreck Rapids. There they are, all happy and healthy and honking, safely away from any nasty bird flu. I wonder how they herd these birds over here. They probably do it with food. Ever heard flamingos? They go honk, 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 honk. Quiet.